What if your daughter or son would be gay? How you would react on it? My daughter and son is not gay, so I'm, I don't have to worry about that. And if it wasn't, we done. I, I'm, I'm done with them. They want to be gay, you be gay by yourself. Not with me, not around me. Do I still love them? No. Nope. I would not love them. I would not recognize them. They would be dead to me. Dead to me? Yes. I believe we are about to have the greatest pride celebration in the history of this globe. My name is Marike Dermel. I don't call myself gay, not straight, not bisexual. But am I anyway? Maybe I like people. When I fell in love with a woman, my family and friends embraced this new idea. So I'm lucky. But unfortunately, I know a lot of other stories too. So I belong to the LGBTQ community. But which letter do I represent? Actually, I don't know myself. And maybe I don't have to. I like to go to the prides in Belgium. For me, the pride is always one big party, an extravagant parade, and an ode to freedom and diversity. It's the same in New York, where the biggest pride ever takes place. This is where it all started, with the uprising at Stonewall. I want to ask you, where, why are you here? Why am I here? Um, I'm here for the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, and I'm also here to celebrate World Pride. Stonewall is incredibly important to the LGBT community, but it also is important to, like, black and brown LGBT community members, um, and me being the latter. Uh, it's, it's an emotional experience for me because it reminds me of all the people who stood before me and brought me to where I am now. Without Stonewall, we wouldn't be able to be who we are today. It's, it, it was a catalyst in just changing everything and forcing, almost forcing everybody to get up and fight for what they believe in and fight for their rights, you know? It was a riot, and now it's this, and it just means a lot to me. I noticed that Stonewall is still alive with the younger generations. The Stonewall Inn was and still is a cafe for LGBT people, transgenders, and drag queens. 50 years ago, gay bars serving alcohol were officially banned, but they were tolerated in exchange for kickbacks. If they didn't pay, the police raided them and people were arrested. In a park near Stonewall, I am meeting with Mark Segal. He was there when the riots broke out after yet another police raid. Can you tell a little bit what happened actually uh, during the riots? The police burst in, and I mean burst in, they slammed people up against the walls. Uh, they called us every profanity that we've heard our entire lives. Fairy, fag, dyke, queer. I was terrified inside the bar, but when I got outside the bar and we were numbers, uh, 50 to 75 of us, I felt empowered for the first time in my life. Um, we started throwing stones and anything we could pick up from the ground. And the police were trapped in the bar. It's the first time that we have imprisoned the police. They were always the one to imprison us. They were scared of us. Yeah. We were not scared of them. What were you fighting for at that time? I don't think we knew it then, uh, but what we really were fighting for was a total change in society and how they thought of us. And there's one word which I've used as my word throughout my entire life, or for these last 50 years, years. visibility. Because if you know who we are, we're no longer the monster in the closet. Stonewall marked the start of the worldwide rainbow movement. Exactly one year after the riots, the very first Pride ever took place in New York. At the forefront of the battle were Latinos, Afro-Americans, transgenders and drag queens, such as Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson. Even 50 years later, the Pride is still the day on which equal rights are celebrated. However, I also hear a lot of criticism around me about what the Pride looks like today. Even straight people come to World Pride, right? So it's not even a safe space for gays alone anymore. In a fancy loft in Manhattan, 
I meet Alexandra Tereshonkova. She organizes the Dyke March, an alternative march next to the Big Pride Parade. A uh, Dyke March is necessary because we need representation of lesbians and dykes in Pride. We've been around now for 27 years and we began as a protest to a mostly white gay male movement. She tells me that dyke used to be a square word, but is now a name embraced by the community itself. It's a collective word for women, lesbians, trans persons, or those who don't feel at home in the man-woman pigeonhole. We want to raise awareness for how many women are actually in the gay movement. And as we've seen over the last 10 years that I've been a part of it, it's grown from 10,000 to 20,000 that show up just for New York City alone. I ask Alexandra if any men are welcome at the Dyke March. For example, men who want to show that they too support the movement. We don't want a movement where we integrate with cis men. In my experience, that means the cis men take over the movement. Uh, so we want to very much prove that we can do this on our own. Cis men, men who are born men and who feel like men, are not welcome at the Dyke March. Yeah! That's why the march is your safe space. That's the place where all of us can take off our clothes and be ourselves and be in 20,000 uh, queer women. How did the lives change for lesbians and dykes since Stonewall? I think lesbians and dykes are now able to assimilate better in society, um, which is a good and a bad thing at the same time. And I think people are able to be out more than they were. There's no gay raids happening like Stonewall happened. But I can say I have a, a close friend who wore a Dyke March t-shirt that has the word Dyke on it and got beat up on the subway last year. I feel a lot of resentment from Alexandra. She's convinced that the fight is still not over. You have to be frustrated in the way society is right now. You have to be angry. We can't afford to be comfortable. It's impressive to feel Alexandra's activism, the creativity, daring, and political slogans with which she and her colleagues fight for more visibility of lesbians and dykes at the Pride movement. Later that evening, at the Stonewall Inn Cafe, I meet Miss Simone, a black trans woman. A lot of the people of color feel that pride has discriminated and excluded them. That's why they have their own pride. She attends the World Pride and the Black Pride, a march especially for black gays and transgenders, the group that experiences the most discrimination. Now that we've gotten all of these rights, you have all these other gay people that are coming out that is excluding and discriminating against their own community. And anyone that says differently is a liar and it comes more from the gay community than from the straight community. Oh, you don't look the way I want, get out of here. You don't have what I want, get out of here. Even about the Stonewall Inn bar, the haven for gays and queers, she feels a lot of frustration. This place means nothing to me personally. The bar owners, they don't want to hire a lot of black girls doing shows or Latino girls doing shows. We have our own bar. Do you understand? This is a museum to a lot of us. Uh, this is just one day out of the year, which is gay pride, but the rest of the year, this is like nothing. A lot of this is for television. A lot of this sounds great. A lot of this is for media. Do you understand? It's a, it's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful lie. What Alexandra and Miss Simone told me keeps coming back. The more I talk to people, the clearer it becomes that not everyone is so happy with the legacy of Stonewall or the evolution of the Pride. Many people think that the Pride is being hijacked by companies as a marketing stunt. Pinkwashing, that's what they call it. Now that I'm paying attention, you can't walk past the shop window without seeing a rainbow flag. One might think, ah, that's good, all that support, only the rest of the year, those flags won't be there. There is also the criticism that companies pay for a nice spot for their float, while the real LGBTQ organizations sometimes have to walk at the back of the pride. These frustrations are heard in yet another protest march, the Queer Liberation March. 
One day later, I meet one of the organizers on the outskirts of town in an abandoned building. We forgot that we didn't finish our march before we decided to parade. The work is not close to done. Busy and his colleagues make pamphlets and works of art that will help shape the queer liberation march. We're making art in protest. Um, it's, uh, these are um, all pieces that are going to march from uh, Christopher Street up to Central Park. And so um, this right here that I'm specific that you're seeing in front of you is um, part of a, a series of puppets that we're making. Actually, I don't know if you want to pan over to him a little bit, but like this puppet, can you hold your puppet up a little bit? Uh, this is uh, our Keith Haring, uh, the ghost of Keith Haring. Um, and so we're making these forms that are, uh, that evoke uh, queer ancestry, um, our past, uh, in ways that are sort of symbolic. This sort of like a, a raising of the dead, making enough noise to raise the dead. And like, who would, who would we want to come back and, and be in this march with us? For Busy, Kit Haring is a role model. He was one of the first artists to openly express himself as a gay man in the 80s and later died of AIDS. The fight against HIV and AIDS is one of the group's major actions. Every 30 seconds, someone dies of AIDS on this planet and every 20 seconds, somebody else gets infected with it. Uh, that's outrageous. Young kids are dying still. In 2019, I know 20-somethings dying of AIDS-related complications, um, and that's heartbreaking to me. This is also an important theme for Busy. He tells me he's HIV positive himself. I'll tell you a personal thing. I went to the pharmacy to get my medication after they said everything was back in order. They showed me a $9,999 price tag on my one bottle of medication for one month. Obviously, I did not leave the pharmacy with medication. Um, this, we're not there. Give me my fucking medication. What should pride then be 50 years after a stonewall? It should be personal. It should be, it should be a kind of liberty that says, this is what makes me proud, and I will move through the world in the way that I want to, with the body that I want to, with the, the morals that I want to, with the sex that I want to, be queer in the streets and in the sheets, and not have to pretend we can't parade. <laughs> We have to fucking march, but we have to dance while we do it. this nation against the devil because it's an abomination to God. Why? It's against God's law. Do you mean the Bible? With yes, the law? yes, the Bible, like the Ten Commandments. Where in the Bible is there written that gay love is uh, forbidden? Do you want, I, I can show that. Can you hold this for me? If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. 
they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And this is written 2,500 years ago? Uh, even even, even uh, longer than that, yes. But I think uh, if you look at all these people, you're the only one with uh, this cross, so don't you feel alone in this? Um, you know, that's fine. That's okay. You know what? I just have Jesus. That's my number one friend, and that's the one friend that will that will that that died for me. What if your son or daughter turns out to be gay? I'm praying and supplicate to my God to save my son from abomination, from sin. So you, you would never agree or support him or her? Never. Never. Wow. That's... No. It's, it's, it's because it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. That same evening, I never expected to walk into a church which is open to LGBT people and queers. Stronger still, besides karaoke on Saturdays, the church is also there for the difficult moments in their lives. I don't believe my eyes. I haven't seen anything like this. We practice what we call a radical welcome. That means everyone is welcome in the church. This is Mark Erson, a Lutheran pastor. You can't just say, oh, come on in and be like us. We have to make space for people to be their authentic selves in a loving, safe environment where we also talk about the love of God. It's very revolutionary. Um, in fact, for the first couple of years that we were doing it, I, um, I was actually uh, hesitant to talk to my colleagues and to say what we were doing because I thought people would think, you're nuts, you know, you're crazy, you can't do this. There are some people who will look at what we're doing and be outraged. And so in that way, yes, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm pushing boundaries from traditional practice. Would you call yourself an activist? Was Jesus an activist? Yes. And am I following in his way? I do the best I can. I keep stumbling from one surprise to the other. So many different opinions and all of them emphatic. It's really take it or leave it. Hence all those different protest marches, sometimes even directed against world pride. But then I think, do they not weaken the strength of fighting together or are they just necessary so that each group can really make their point? What is certain is that the battle hasn't been fought yet not even 50 years after Stonewall and the first Prides. I hope the people who are watching this do not think that Pride is something that is a historical event. Okay, we're done, we fought, we're good. It's, we, it's a pride to have in ourselves. This is JJ Cleopatra Daniels, an artist, writer and activist who identifies as non-binary, not fitting into one of the classic gender pigeonholes. I meet JJ by chance on Christopher Street Pier, and we start talking. We are now at the pier um, near Christopher Street that was known since the 70s to be a place of organizing and support for people who were LGBT who felt discarded. Gay men in the 70s came to find love, and then it moved and evolved into homeless people coming and voguing and dancing, um, to people coming here to still being able to be themselves in a safe environment. It's like you're walking down memory lane because both for good and for bad, you know, there are people here who are here to be themselves, but there are people who are not here at all. Marsha P. Johnson was found drowning here uh, while floating, and they said it was a suicide and it was actually, she was murdered. If you can make a wish for the future, what would that be? I said to myself this year, the biggest gift you could give yourself to your pride is celebrate your body and celebrate your worth because the more people who are in pride with themselves, the more we have power together to fight for a good world. Finding pride in yourself, that's what JJ says is at the heart of the protest. Sometimes people wonder why a pride always has to be so extravagant. But according to JJ, you can only break open the boxes by putting it in the spotlight, loud and clear. 
like a cry for freedom. a party tonight, okay? This is not a show, this is a party. So if you're having oh. some fun, let's hear you make some noise. And we are happy to have you here if you are a boy, a girl, if you are gay, if you are bi, if you are a lesbian, if you are in between, if you are transitioning from one to the other and everything else happening and all those things. You are welcome here as long as you aren't hurting yourself or anyone else. Can we abide by those rules? My last day in New York has arrived. After a week full of protest marches, it's all the more confronting that after 50 years of struggle, there is still no real equal opportunity for everyone. How long will it be until all homophobia and transphobia have disappeared and everyone can really be themselves? Here we go. We as an LGBTQIA plus community need to fight now more than ever more than ever, as the rights of our community are well met. We are to be united and not divided. And if you're a straight person here today, use your privilege to speak out for the oppression that is happening to us today. Pride will never be the same for me again. I will dance, laugh and party. But at the same time, I will experience it more consciously as a protest. I will think of Busy, Mark, Alexandra, JJ, and Miss Simone, and all the others who made me feel why the protest is still necessary today. But also to all of us who don't feel free or happy, and for whom we have to keep fighting in the prides, but also beyond. Yeah.